first finish. And they did. And with that, we move on to the big boys at the head of the field. This is Class T1 Plus, where Dakar-capable race cars, including the fearsome GR DKR Hilux T1 Plus, that won the Dakar Rally in 2022 and 2023, do battle. The field has grown significantly in recent times, but looking at the championship standings, it is clear that the fight between Toyota and Ford is alive and well. Hank Lartgun topped the charts, followed by Gareth Woolridge and defending champion Janil de Villiers. Which meant that Lartgun, winner in round one, was the man with a target on his back. Anawi and Essen, uh, I really enjoy these roads. I, I like, I like the, the tight and twisty things, even though I think these cars aren't exactly designed for that. They, they like the open deserts a bit more. That KZN is the domain of Neil Woolridge Motorsport, who runs the NWM Ford Castle team. Their HQ is situated in Peter Marisburg, just 30 minutes from the race location. And if anyone was going to give the boys in red a bloody nose in Esten, it was likely to be the lads from just down the road. We visited Neil and his sons Lance and Gareth at their HQ before the race. Our domestic, and domestic championship in South Africa, as I, as I mentioned, is probably one of the best in the world. It's a very, very good training and learning ground, not only from a driving perspective, but from a, from a development of the car perspective. As for Lance and Garrett, they both knew what to do in Eston, and they both reckoned that racing in their backyard didn't offer them any significant advantages. But yeah, it's, it's going to be a very exciting race. It's a very technical race. Hopefully all things go well and we can, we can bring back the top step. Down in Eston, it was time for the men to be separated from the boys. Ten class T1 Plus machines rolled up for the start of the Pirelli qualifier. And at 12.30 on Friday, the 12th of May, it was go time in Eston. the class T1 cars are leading the field, most of them completed the full qualifying distance, only to have their times truncated at the 21.2 km mark, due to the fire that blocked the route for some of the competitors. But when the smoke had cleared, the dust had settled, and the times calculated, it was Brian Baragwanath and Leonard Kramer who went fifth fastest. The century racing pairing finished just 18 seconds behind the pole sitters. Fourth fastest, Hank Lazagun and Brett Cummings, who had to open the road for the qualifier. The TGRSA crew struggled to find the way in places, but lost only 12 seconds despite their challenges. This brings us to the sharp end of the field, where Lance Woolridge and Kenny Gilbert clocked the third fastest time in qualifying. Just a single second faster than their TGRSA rivals. But the NWM Ford Castrol team had to be contained with the wily old fox Janil de Villiers and co-driver Dennis Murphy, recording a time 7 seconds quicker to take second place. Pole position? That went to none other than NWM Ford Castrol's Gareth Woolridge and Boyd Dreyer. The local lads flexing their muscles and clearly throwing down the gauntlet to their Toyota counterparts. Their winning margin was 4 seconds with a tough main event clearly on the cards. I said to Boyd before the race I felt super relaxed and I felt really confident. Uh, him and I are feeling good together, the car is feeling the best it's ever felt and I think it will show today so they are very tough. Here are the details again. It was Woolridge and Dre who took pole position ahead of De Villiers and Murphy and Woolridge and Gilbert. This made for an interesting starting grid with a main race that certainly didn't disappoint. In the end, the main race can be summed up by just one word, but one has to say it repeatedly to do it justice. The word? Drama. Drama and more drama. The route was tough, tricky and challenging with no room for error, while dust was also a huge factor. The names of Gary Berthold and Ernest Roberts do not appear on the results boards as both these drivers failed to reach the finish. Century Racing Brian Baragwanath and Leonard Kramer very nearly also joined the list of non-finishers when they were stuck in the ditch. But they eventually got out to cross the finish line and so did Simon Murray and Achim Bachmann in their WCT HT2 Toyota, who recorded a ninth place finish in the Premier class after rolling their car the day before. Unfortunately for local hero Lance Woolridge and navigator Kenny Gilbert, the fight for overall victory never materialized. The pre-event favorites suffered a few setbacks and then sportingly also stopped to help recover a class T1 crew of Evan Basson and Leander Pinar out of a ditch, dropping them down to 8th in class. 7th was another loss, but this one was behind the wheel of the two-wheel drive King Price Extreme Century Racing CR6. The big dog and partner Argan Ritz also overcame their fair share of technical issues, so the crew was happy to see the end. 
Crispus is a former champion and together with Albatus Fenta, the redlined Revo crew would not have been so happy with the eventual 6th place finish in the Premier Class T1+. Fissa had his work cut out after starting in the middle of the field, but they overcame some mechanical issues only to lose more time with the puncture. And what a welcome return to top-level racing for the Horn brothers, Johan and Vanna, who missed their home race in Malalan earlier due to the tragic passing of their father. The Horns were back with a vengeance in their team Hilux Rally Raid Hilux and chased hard to fight for a podium position. But these are hard to come by. And in the end, they had to settle for fifth overall, just 44 seconds behind the fourth place finishers. It was an eventful run for Guy Bottrell and Simon Basin Lyle to say the least. Although hailing from KZN, it was the pairing's first ever outing at the Sugar Belt. Add to that the fact that to open the road for the first part of the Saturday. And it was clear that the Toyota Zoo Racing SA squad did a good job to bring the Hilux home in one piece albeit just one position shy from the podium. And then there were three. The two Toyota Gazoo Racing SA crews of Hank Larsgun and Brett Cummings and Janiel de Villiers and Dennis Murphy and the NWM Ford Castle team of local lads Gareth Woolridge and Boyd Dreyer. Right in the tree, the Ford in the Toyota Sandwich. Although on this occasion the Ford started on top after winning the qualifying race the day before. But what a crazy race it would turn into for all three of these crews, who each experienced a fair share of drama. Bullridge initially managed to maintain a slight advantage at the top of the field, but then suffered a puncture just 40 kilometers from the end. This led to issues with their brakes and robbed them of more valuable seconds. And that's all that Janiel de Villiers needed. Having said that, the former multiple champion and past winner of this race made it difficult for himself by also picking up a flat tie or two and wrong slotting on a number of occasions. But in the end, the veterans snuck into second place by a margin of just 19 seconds over the Ford of Woolridge. After that was settled, it didn't take much to figure out that Toyota Gazoo Racing SA's Hank Larsgun and Brett Cummings were on their way to claim their second victory of the season in as many events. And it was everything but easy. The timesheet will show a winning margin of more than three minutes, but their run included a few punches of their own, as well as time lost when they landed up in a ditch. So this is what the record books will say after the completion of the 2023 Sugar Bowl 400. The times do not tell the full story, but the names of Larsgun and Cummings top the sheets with a 3 minute and 16 second victory over teammates De Villiers and Murphy, with Woolridge and Dreyer just a further 19 seconds back. I was actually surprised at the end that we managed to pull a gap again, so really happy with the result. Time for the podium finishers to enjoy the winner's belly from the Sugar Belt podium and the second win in a row for Lartigan, who now also leads the 2023 title fight. Next up, the big one. The flagship marathon event is returning to our neighboring country Botswana for the first time since the start of COVID for the legendary Toyota Gazoo Racing Kalahari Botswana 1000 Desert Race. See you in the Kalahari from the 23rd to the 25th of June.